First of all, I think if you ask most Americans, name the top 10 leaders that you can think of, I think a lot of them are going to think of Martin Luther King. And uh, in 1967, he came out against the Vietnam War. He gave a, a stirring, rousing speech at Riverside Church, uh, uptown of Manhattan, uh, in which he spoke out against Vietnam. If you, I'll give a link to the speech uh, that has the audio of it. And it's, 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 it's rousing, it's stirring, it's well-reasoned. You know Martin Luther King. He's amazing. He's, he's very influential. So why did it take him so long to come out against Vietnam? He was against Vietnam for some time before. The reason was that he had a cozy relationship with the Johnson administration, and the Johnson administration was back in the Vietnam War. Okay, so if he was against the Vietnam War for a long time, why did he eventually come out against it at this point? Was it someone had an even more eloquent speech that motivated him? And that person was Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, about a year before, in the previous year, was drafted and decided to become a conscientious objector, meaning he was not going to accept being drafted. And he said, and this is the, the, the speech that I believe is, is as authentic, it's more authentic and as stirring as Martin Luther King's speech. He said, no Viet Cong ever called me a nigger. Something that someone like me is not even allowed to say today. I'm quoting him. Uh, it's fewer than 10 words. And I don't know about you, but when I hear that, when I hear that said, the first thing I think of, well, if they didn't, then who did? And then it hits you, the people who are calling him that are the people who are sending him to go over there to risk his life trying to kill people who, has nothing, who have nothing to do with him. Now, when you think of Martin Luther King, he was, by this point, a Nobel Prize winner. He has a doctorate, Dr. Martin Luther King. He's a reverend. Uh, he's led all these uh, boycotts and successful marches and things like that. You expect him to be a, um, a statesman. And he has a lot of credibility because of that. What about, Martin Luther, uh, what about Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali has a gold medal in the Olympics from boxing. Other than that, he's a fighter. What makes his speech so eloquent? Certainly it's very short and pithy and meaningful. The big thing is that it's authentic. He, anyone could have said the same thing. Now you could say, well, he's, on, he's a big boxer, that makes him really big. You could say that makes it easier for him or more effective for him, but you could also say that gives him more to lose. What happened after he did this was that the, uh, the U.S. government took away his boxing license and took away his passport so he could not, and this is at the prime of his career, so he couldn't fight, he couldn't earn his living, nor could he leave the country to earn his living somewhere else. I think since then, the public has come to support King's and Ali's views on Vietnam, but at the time they were, taking, they were both taking big risks, but Ali being first, I think was taking a bigger one. And what I want to talk about here is that he was speaking authentically about something that anyone could have said. That authenticity, I think, is what makes him so influential. It's also what makes what he did so accessible to everybody else. You know, I, give, I teach these courses in leadership, and one of the things that I do is I talk about learning uh, to be more aware of your thoughts. And I follow that up with a set of other exercises, being aware of other people's beliefs, eventually to, um, eventually to be able to speak authentically without this filter. We don't like following people who filter their speech too much because you know when the chips are down, you want someone that you can follow that you know will back you up, you being a member of their team, not just abandon you and do their own thing. He was speaking without a filter. That's the best I could tell. He bypassed it. So I give these exercises to my students. And I tell them at the beginning about Muhammad Ali. And I say, uh, when, when they look at what he says to the camera, to the world, they think there's a qualitative difference between what we're saying, what we can say, and what he says. After they do the exercises, my authentic, uh, authentic voice exercise, they look at what he says. And they say there's a quantitative difference. So the big thing I want to talk about here, one, I want to celebrate Martin Luther King's memory, uh, his, his vision and ability to, uh, his vision and, and influence uh, with the Vietnam War, but also his people who influenced him, especially Muhammad Ali, and say how accessible it is for anyone to have the influence and persuasion and motivate, ability to motivate that he did.